Today we're going to begin a new series of thought. I've entitled it Satan's Eight Lies That Bind Us. And I want to begin today by reading John chapter 8 and verse 32. There's so many things that are binding God's people today. Not only binding God's people, but binding the world, keeping them from coming to Christ. And so many times these are the excuses that we use not to do the Lord's will. And certainly things that we've either been taught or that we've come to believe and they're just not scripturally true. Jesus said in John chapter 8, and verse 32, he said, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. We're beginning a brand new series I'm entitling Satan's Eight Lies That Bind Us. Now, you've heard about the ties that bind us. We sing about it. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. We have, bind, we have ties that bind us together as God's children. But may I say to you, there are also lies that bind us. We are bound as a church to believe that God can do anything. In our deacons meeting this morning, before we prayed, the men were extolling the fact of how far God has brought us in recent years. And the number of folks that are part of our church and the things that we've been able to accomplish and are accomplishing for the cause of Christ. Folks, that's God. I told you when I first came eight years ago that God builds the church. And certainly, uh, as you have come to see God uh, honor his word, we have seen more and more steps of faith, and God has honored that faith. But may I say that in so many churches today, and maybe in the hearts of some of our folks here, there are still those that are bound by the lies of Satan, lies that we have come to believe in our life, lies that have been taught to us by the culture in which we live. Even some of our parents taught us some of these lies that we hold on to, some that we learned in school. We prayed for our school systems today, and certainly some of the lies that we've come to hold on to and believe, we were taught in school, and we've taught to absolutely believe them because they are fact and they're not. As yet, there are lies that still affect us adversely, things that we've come to believe that keep us from being all that God wants us to be. We want to replace those lies with the truth of God that's going to set us free. And that's what we're going to look at over the next couple of months, things that we've come to believe. And God said, I will set you free with the truth. Amen. The truth will set you free. So the only thing that will break a lie that is binding you, that is putting you in bondage of fear, that is keeping you bound in worry, that is bonding you in self-defeat and frustration, the only thing that's going to help you overcome these things that are binding you is the truth. The truth will break the lies that bind. In fact, I want you to look at what Jesus said again in our text. He said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So we want to talk about how to break those lies, how to break the things that may be in our culture or in our world or in our community or down south. We've come to believe that just aren't so. We want to walk and talk about what truth really is. And we're going to see what Jesus said about truth, about various things in the next several weeks. One of the things that I've heard over and over again in all of my Christian walk, and especially since I've been a pastor and I talk with people on a daily basis, I hear this one thing that we hear over and over again, and that is it doesn't really matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. God's going to reach down and bring us all home, and no matter what we believed or no matter uh, what we uh, did with our life, God's going to make everything okay. How many of you have ever heard that statement? It doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. I know I hear it on a constant basis. We're all working for the same place. I took a course years ago that was a secular course 
on world philosophical literature, which has to do with all of us climbing the same mountain, just different sides. We all call God different things, but it's the same God. No, I'm afraid that's not so. We're all working from the same place. It's one of those lies that the world would have you to believe. It doesn't matter what you believe, as long as you're sincere, is something that many of the folks, even in our community, hold on to. Well, I'm sincere in what I believe. Well, God is going to honor that sincerity they believe. Doesn't matter what you believe, God's going to honor the fact that you were sincere in what you believe. And that sounds good in the political climate in which we live. It sounds politically correct to say that. You know, when my day coming up, we used to say different strokes for different folks, right? You remember that? Well, you believe one thing, I believe another, uh, but we're all brothers in the human family. Uh, all that we're taught, we may be taught differently. We may be taught to believe differently because we grew up differently. And all that sounds broad-minded. It all sounds tolerant, which is the big word today. It all sounds politically correct. It just sounds cool to have the attitude of everybody's going to be fine. It doesn't matter what you believe. Just be sincere. But I learned a long time ago that to make, to make it in this life, you need more than sincerity. If you want to really accomplish anything, it takes more than sincerity. You need to believe the truth. Amen. Not just believe, but believe the truth. You need to believe the things that are true in the Word of God, because sincerity is never going to get you to heaven. Amen. I read a story some time ago. It broke my heart, but I've been thinking about it. couldn't get it off my mind. I want to share it with you. I read this story some time ago that uh, in a fire, a fireman was rescuing a family from a burning house. And the fireman had gotten all the people out except a little baby that was still in the crib, still asleep upstairs in the bedroom, according to the story. And somehow they had failed to go in that room and get that baby out. And the house was completely engulfed in flames. So the mother said to the fireman, where is my baby? And you can imagine the terror in the heart as she saw the flames in the house coming out of the windows and the doors. And she still knew that her baby was inside in that furnace of fire. So one brave fireman, according to the story, risked his own life. And he went all the way back in the smoke and the flames and he made his way somehow up those stairs into that baby's room where the mother had said the baby was in the crib and he, uh, and, uh, he couldn't see anything because the smoke was thick and he groped around and he felt around and he found the little bed and he felt in the bed and he took the, he felt the blanket and, and the body and he took the blanket and wrapped it around the little body and then put the body up against his chest and walked down those stairs again and made his way out and handed the mother the blanket and the body and, and, and she held it close to her and she, she, she then took it down in her arms and unfolded the blanket and said, Oh no, oh no, oh no, you got the doll. The fireman was sincere. But the baby died. Isn't that sad? And yet we got people in our community that are sincere about the community, sincere about social things, sincere about so many things, but they're sincerely wrong. Many people are going to miss heaven by 18 inches. The distance between their brain and their heart. They've never asked the Lord into their life, into their heart. Folks, listen, some people are going to miss heaven because they are sincerely wrong. Look at what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I want to start out today by searching for the truth. Searching for the truth. Let's look at the importance of truth this morning. What is truth? important. 
What is truth? First of all, there needs to be a search for the truth. You remember what Jesus said? You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. All of us need to be on a quest, a quest for the truth. You know, it's not a matter of what you grew up with, or what you want to do with your life or what you believe. It's a matter of finding the truth because if you're sincere about the truth, you aren't going to make tragic mistakes. In other words, let me say this. If you really want to understand God, then God will hold you responsible for what you believe. Amen. God's going to hold you responsible for what you believe. Why does it matter what you believe, even if you're sincere? Why can you be sincerely think about something sincerely and yet be wrong and still miss heaven? Because God will hold you responsible for your beliefs. What you believe, what you give your life to, what you are sincerely involved in, God's going to hold you responsible. Why does it matter? Why can you be sincerely, sincerely think about something and yet it's wrong and you miss heaven? Because God holds you responsible. Your beliefs are a choice. You choose what to believe. Nobody can make you believe what you believe. That's your choice. You hold on to certain beliefs because you choose to believe those certain beliefs. You, you believe them. You hold on to them. And yet the Bible teaches that God has given you the freedom to believe whatever you want. You can believe whatever you want. God gives you that freedom. You can believe anything you want about anything you want. And you'll pay the consequences of what you believe one day. God says, search for the truth. It's a choice. You've got to choose to search for the choice. And God says, he'll make his truth known to you, but only if you search. It'll come a time in your life when you have to break the ties that bind. You have to embrace the truth as God reveals it to you. Folks, I used to hold on to all kinds of things, but I've come in my years to understand that there is one truth and that one truth is the one truth that I must search for and I must seek for and I must choose. You can believe anything you want to. I mean, if you want to believe that Elvis is still alive, you can believe it. If you want to believe in the Loch Ness Monster, you can believe in that. If you want to believe in the abominable snowman, that's your choice. You can sincerely believe in everything that you want to believe in, but it doesn't make it true. Amen. The question is, do you believe the truth? Are you searching for the truth? God's going to hold you responsible for your beliefs. You can't blame your parents. You can't blame your teachers. You can't blame everybody else. You have to be responsible for what you believe. And one day, God is going to hold you responsible for the choices that you make. I want you to notice, secondly, not only will God hold you responsible for what you believe, but I also want you to understand that your actions are determined by your belief. Your actions are determined by you believe. What you believe in your mind is going to affect your life. For example, if you believe that you're a clumsy person, how are you going to respond? You're going to respond as a clumsy person. If you think you're unsuccessful, if you think you're, you're less than somebody else, if you suffer from a self-image problem, then you're going to respond to people in the same kind of way as the way you feel about yourself. If you believe that everybody's crooked and nobody can be trusted, you're going to react uh, superstitiously to everybody that comes your way as if they had a mask on and they weren't real with you and they weren't real towards you and everybody's looking to, to take everybody else uh, to the... Uh, for what they can get out of people. That even falls true in the church. If you believe that every preacher is a crook, 
you're going to look at every preacher as a crook. If you believe that every other person is out for themselves, then you're going to look at people that way. But I'm here to tell you it's not so. You see, every action in your life, every fear that you have, every doubt that you hold on to is a result of the of the way that you choose to believe. You choose to believe. And that's why beliefs are so important. If your beliefs are wrong, then your life is going to be wrong. You're going to respond wrongly to people. If you, if you have the wrong kind of belief, it's going to be a disaster in your life. If you don't believe God loves you and cares for you, then you're never going to pray. You're never going to seek his face. If you believe that God is out to get you, uh, like a lot of people do, even in our own community, then you'll believe that God is a mean tyrant and he's just waiting for you to make a mistake so he can pounce on you and you can't avoid God at all costs. And, and you aren't going to want any contact with God, nor are you going to want any contact with God's things like the Bible, like the church, like God's people, because you think God is a tyrant. What you believe about God affects every area of your life. If you see God as a loving God, a caring God, a wise, compassionate God, if you see God as someone who always has your best interest at heart, then you're going to respond differently than someone who doesn't feel those things. And then in your search, belief, uh, that belief matters. I want you to keep in mind what Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. He said, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Watch what you believe. Then again, I want you to see that not only will God hold you responsible for what you believe and the fact that what you believe affects the way you live, but thirdly, culture has taught us many false things. Amen. The culture in which we live has taught us many false things that we hold on to. I think we would all agree. Remember what John said in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. John said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And over and over again in the Bible, we are warned against false teachers, people who will teach us false things. It might be your parents. It might be a religious leader. It might be a used to was. You know what that is? Somebody who used to be this and once was that. Maybe they were a deacon in the church. Maybe they were a preacher one time. Maybe they were a religious person in your life. And now they're teaching you false things. In America today, our culture is revealing, is revealed and shaped by the talk shows that are on television. Listen, I can't believe some of the stuff that comes across the TV. I can't believe some of the things that are being taught to people. And it's morning and night when you have talk shows and people that are sharing what they believe. Let me give you 10 things that I jotted down. These things come from our television. Some are teaching that if you, if you listen to them, you're going to find out that your problems are somebody else's fault. It's your mama's fault. It's your daddy's fault. It's the church's fault. It's this fault, that fault. They want you to believe that your problems are not you. It's somebody else. They also teach that the world owes you happiness. If you live in this world, you're part of society. I don't care whether you're red, yellow, green, purple. It doesn't matter. The world owes you happiness. And by the way, I tell you, it doesn't owe you happiness. You also hear on television that you'll be happy if you get everything you want. Just be the American Idol. Just win the, the price is right. Just have a million dollars in the bank. Just win the lottery. And you're going to be happy. You're going to be happy. But I tell you, you won't. I know people who have everything. I used to work 
as a fundraiser among multimillionaires for mission boards. And some of those who have everything and live in the largest places and wrote me checks for hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars for mission work who could just write a check for a hundred. I can't even write a check for a hundred dollars. But uh, some of those are some of the most miserable people that I ever ran into. Everything, if you just had everything, you'd be happy. If I just had one more of those things, I used to have an old deacon from World War II, he used to say, if I just had one of those things, everybody says, I got to have one of those things. Another thing that I hear is this, there's never any reason to feel guilty about anything. Don't feel guilty about it. It's your choice. If your marriage is falling apart and you're having an affair or you, you, you stole something, don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. As long as what you stole is less than $900, the police are not going to make you, are not going to arrest you. Isn't that interesting thing? I also found this to be true. As you listen to television, they'll tell you, they'll tell you that man is basically good. Man is basically unselfish. My question is, what planet do they live on? <laughs> right? What planet do they live on? Also tell me, well, all beliefs are equally valid. Doesn't matter what you believe, just be sincere. And you hear that over and over again. The Methodists are right, the Presbyterians are right, the Baptists are right, the Catholics are right, the Jehovah's Witnesses are right, the Mormons are right, the, 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 the Muslims are right. Everybody's right. All beliefs are equally valid. I also heard this two weeks ago. Pornography and perversion are just innocent and harmless. Pornography and perversion. You see, it's okay for you now to have sexual relations with a teenager under age. That's your desire. One of these days, you're going to hear them say, well, I've been counseling for years when it came to parents and people that were in my office where they had molested their two and three-year-old. They're going to say, that's okay. That's your desire. That's okay. Pornography and perversion are harmless. Now, I've also been told, you can just have it all. Just have it all. And, I, and let, let me share two more with you, and then I'll be finished. You shouldn't have to wait for anything in life. That's why we carry credit cards. That's why we're in debt. That's why we're up to our nose, because we had to have it all. We couldn't buy a John boat. We had to have a yacht. We had to have the biggest car, the best house. I had a couple in my office 15 years ago who told me they were having a divorce. They had three small children. They were having a divorce because they were so in debt, they couldn't afford the $500,000 home they had. They couldn't afford the three $75,000 automobiles that they had. And they were getting divorced because they were they never saw each other. And all they did was argue. I said, you need to sell some of your stuff to be able to put your family back on track. And the man told me this. He said, I'll get a third job before I ever sell my boat and my car and my house. I said, you're losing your family. And you're going to get a third job to afford what you, what you want to make yourself happy. Doesn't make sense, does it? You shouldn't have to wait. And the last thing from television that I'll share, they say, you know, the answer is within you. Look to yourself. The answer is within you. And let me say something. If the answer were within you, you'd already have figured it out, right? Amen. I'll guarantee you, I've searched my heart for many answers and I don't find them there. I find them in the Word of God. Did you know that even if you believe a false belief, even if you hold to a false belief, it's going to seem real and it's going to seem true. A lot of false things being taught to our kids today. Millions of years 
this has been developing and this, that, and the other thing. All those things are theories. All those things have no validity. I could take you to Texas right now where a man's footprint is side by side to a dinosaur footprint in a rock strata, side by side. And yet the school systems would say they were separated by millions of years. I could go on, but I won't. That's not my sermon today. There are so much being taught to our kids, which is false based. Amen. A belief doesn't have to be true in order to affect you consciously, emotionally. You can believe it even if it's a total lie. You can believe it. Many people are bound by insecurity. They're bound by fear. They're bound by worry. They're bound by frustration because they're believing things about themselves, about God. They're believing things that are being taught to them that are false. And so they end up with insecurities, not knowing what is true. Jesus said the same thing when he said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And my goal in this series over the next few weeks my goal in these messages is to expose some of the lies that were being taught by radio, by television, by printed media, by our school systems so many times, and by people who generally believe that they know it all. They don't know anything. My goal is to expose these things and understand the truth of God's word regarding these lies. So that we can replace many of those lies that people are holding on to and have been taught with the truth of God's word and enjoy the abundant life that Jesus came to give us by finding, following, and finishing our life in the truth. Amen. We're searching for the truth. Then secondly, I want to bring you to the source of truth. Where do you find truth? Well, remember what Jesus said? I am the way. He said, I am the truth. There's only one source of truth. And that's Jesus Christ. The Bible says that whether you are black or white, brown or yellow, whether you, uh, whatever your race may be, whatever your business is, whatever your occupation might be, whatever vocation you're in, whether you're married or single, the scripture teaches us uh, 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 there comes a time when we have to choose what we're, what's going to be our guidebook. There comes a time that we have to choose what's going to be our north star. We have to choose what our compass of life is is going to be and on what I'm going to base the views that I have getting me from this place into eternity. You have to choose. I want to submit to you today that the only source of truth is Jesus Christ. He's the only source of truth. Jesus is the source of absolute truth. Amen. He said, I am what? The truth. I am the truth. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 4, verse 24, that God will continue to be true even if every man is a liar. Amen. If everyone is a liar, God will continue to be true. That's the authority. That's the standard by which you can base your life. You're going to have to make a choice, though. You're going to have to choose whether you're going to follow the Word of God or the world. You're going to have to choose whether you're going to follow Christ or are you going to follow culture? Because many times the truth of Jesus goes counter to culture. It's not going to be taught. You're not going to hear it on the street corner. It goes counter to the popular opinion of things. And one of the reasons it's hard to discover the truth is because it's hard to follow the truth. It's hard to follow the truth. It's not a popular decision to follow the truth. People believe things. Young people believe things. People believe things that are popular today that are leading them down a dark road. And when you counter to, when you go counter to your culture, you're going in one direction and the rest of the world is going in another direction. It's not easy. 
I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you today. If you want to find real happiness, if you want to find real joy, if you want to find real direction in your life, then you have to know the source of absolute truth. Absolute truth. Jesus is not only the source of absolute truth, he's also the source of unchanging truth. Amen. The problem with going by the wisdom of the world is the world's always changing. I was an educator for a while. The one thing that I learned was this. Every 18 months, the science books have to be updated and changed and revised because they're obsolete. Can you imagine basing your life on a world where every 18 months, everything you believed 18 months ago, a year and a half ago, is obsolete and, and, and is being countermanded by what's being taught, what's being learned today? And yet we find even in our educational system, they're always having to upgrade what it is they say they know. What the world says is never going to be the same tomorrow as it is today. It's always going to be different. What's popular now, what's in vogue now, is next year is going to be out of vogue. It's going to be out of correctness. The world's wisdom changes. But God's word, God's wisdom is unchanging. It's always the same. Luke chapter 21, verse 33. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. It's absolute truth. It's unchanging truth. And that's what Jesus said. What Jesus said 30, uh, uh, 30 years ago, 100 years ago, a thousand years ago is still true today. What the apostle Paul preached and taught is true today, just as, and as valid today as it was when Paul said it. Amen. Jesus is the source of absolute truth. Jesus is the source of unchanging truth. And Jesus is the source of transforming truth. Amen. Right. You see, truth isn't something you believe. Listen to me. Truth is not something you believe. Truth is something that you practice. Truth is something that you follow. How do I know? Because Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these things, sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, built his house upon a rock. Jesus says, it's not a matter of just hearing it. you got to do it. You've got to follow it. You've got to live it. Jesus said, if you want to build your house on the truth, everyone who hears the words of mine and puts them into practice is a wise man who's building his house, his life, his finances, his job, his, uh, his decision making on a rock. And when the storms come and when the rain falls and when the wind blows, your family will succeed. Your job will succeed. Your life will succeed. We've searched the truth. We know it's Jesus. The source of that truth. So what do you need to do now? You need to surrender to the truth. Surrender to the truth. I like what one of my favorite chapters in the Bible is Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Verse 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. But in verse number 2 he goes on to say be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The first secret to breaking the lies that bind us and breaking the lie that says it's, you only have to be sincere, doesn't matter what you believe, is that you let the truth of God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. What does that mean? What does it mean to completely change your mind? Well, first of all, it means to know the truth. Know the truth. 
You've got to know the truth. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, there's coming a time when people won't listen to the truth. They're going to be looking for teachers who are going to tell them what they want to hear. There are churches today that are meeting that don't even open the Bible. They just tell people what they want to hear. They're not going to listen to the Bible. They're, not, they're going to go blindly follow the ideas of some preacher, some priest, some rabbi, and they're going to follow those ideas because they sound good and they make them feel good. You've got TV evangelists and radio evangelists with large crowds that are making you feel good, but you're going to feel good all the way into hell. And so you have to commit your heart to knowing the truth from God's Word, not just looking for somebody whose messages are exactly what you believe. We need to look for teaching that tells us exactly what the truth is and let the chips fall where they may and commit ourselves to the truth, not what's popular, but what God's word says. Amen. Know the truth. Secondly, obey the truth. When you learn it, obey it. I want to show you what Paul said to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 and 15, Paul said, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in the things which, uh, which is the head, even Christ. Folks, listen. It's one thing to carry a Bible. Now, oh, granted, it's one thing to carry a Bible. It's one thing to read the Bible. But it's an entirely different thing to become a Bible. Amen. Believing what you believe based on the Scripture and living by the Word of God. It's an entirely different thing. We definitely need to know the truth. We need to obey the truth. And we've got to make a choice. You can't continue to choose the world's way. You've got to make a choice. Make a commitment to the truth. Paul said this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. We are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Brethren beloved of the Lord. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and the belief of the truth. Amen. What is true? Jesus said what? I am the truth. When I talk about being committed to the truth, what am I talking about? Being committed to Jesus, who said, I am the truth. You know, Nobody else could make that claim but Jesus. Jesus, suppose somebody came up on this platform. They stood behind this microphone. They said, I'm the truth. I'm not a teacher teaching the truth. I am the truth. I'm not a philosopher examining the truth. I am the truth. I'm not a prophet telling you about the truth. I am the truth. If anybody did that, we'd ask them to get out off the platform and sit down. But Jesus said, I am the truth. I embody the truth. I am incarnating the truth. Jesus said, if you want to go to heaven, he said, if you want your sins forgiven, he said, if you want to get rid of all those hang-ups and live right, if you want to have your sins taken away, if you want to have your past wiped out, if you want to have real peace in your heart, Jesus said, you have to commit yourself to me because I am the truth. Amen. The devil is going to try to make you believe that there is some other way except Jesus. Some other way you can be happy. Some other way you can have eternal life. Some other way that you can have everything you want. God God will let you believe that if you want to believe it. You can believe whatever you want. That's your right. God will let you believe whatever you believe 
And you could be as sincere about it as you possibly could be, believing that your sincerity and what you believe is going to take you to heaven. But I tell you this, I tell you this, the person of Jesus Christ is the truth to every question. You can say today, well, I don't want to commit myself to Jesus. I just want to live however I want to live. I, 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 don't, I want to be separated from Jesus and the things about Jesus. I don't want to have to go to church. I don't want to have to read the Bible. I don't want to have to live for the Lord. And you have every right to believe that. You have every right. God will let you do that. And if you say, I want to live apart from Jesus, God will let you live apart from Jesus for the rest of eternity in hell. Without Christ, you'll spend eternity apart from Jesus. You might say, well, Brother Earl, is hell real? Is hell, is heaven real? I know that they are. You know how I know? Because Jesus said so. Amen. And he's truth. He's truth. I want you to understand this one thing from everything I've said this morning. The truth is Jesus and everything else is a lie. No matter how sincerely you believe a lie, it's still a lie. No matter how sincerely you believe a lie, it's still a lie. It can never make a lie into a truth. Don't let the father of lies, Satan himself, deceive you this morning. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, if you don't have the assurance that if you died today, you'd be on your way to heaven, if you don't know that the decisions you make are based on the Word of God and the things of God and the Son of God, then I invite you today to bow your unworthy knee before the Lord. Receive Christ as your Savior. Give yourself to the truth. And one day you'll hear Him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many. Jesus will stand before the Father and say, this is one of my children. Welcome him home. And God's going to say, welcome. You followed the truth. And the truth has set you free. Shall we stand? Next week, Satan has spiritual flaws. We'll talk about Satan's spiritual flaws, Lord willing. Father, we thank you for the things that we've learned and pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll Speak to our hearts that we may believe the truth, that we may hold to the truth, that we may follow the truth, not only of God's word, but of the God's living word, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you speak to the hearts of our people. No matter what we give our life to, may it be centered in the things of the Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.